Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is the Immortal Ant for us, and today I have a brand new tutorial series for you. This and this series will be learning how to use RPG Maker MV. I'll guide you through all the ste all the steps of using RPG Maker, and uh, by the end you should be able to make a simple RPG, if not even advanced RPG. So to get started, yeah, just uh, look around your editor. See, um, you can't click anything yet because First, you need to go up to this um, tab file and click new project. For this, I'm just going to call it tutorial tutorial game there. And uh, I'll just name this RPG Maker MV. And press OK. And then it will copy the files from the RTP. I will let this go for a moment. Anyway, you can pause the video here and you can explore a little bit in the editor and then uh, unpause the video when you're ready for the next step. Alright, so let's just go right into this. So first, let's delete this map 001 because that's not really something good to start out with. Usually RPGs start out in some kind of village, so right click here and select load. It'll bring up this very large menu here and let's open up the normal town. Now, as you see the sprite is right there because this is the starting position for the player. You don't really want that, but here is where every this is where our tutorial will begin. How are we going to you know, a lot of RPGs start out where the main character is sleeping and then he wakes up. No, I'm not going to go that in detail, but I will have him start in a building. Let's actually choose this building right here since he's already over it. So right click the normal town and select load again. I'm going to scroll down and find house 1 and open it. Now uh, let's go ahead and uh, right click this area right next to the bed right click it and set starting position for player now let's just try playing our game and see how it is right now anyway let so now that our game is open let's just select new game and as you see you have a full party here but uh, you can't do anything quite yet I can't interact with anything you can't get out of the house. So first, I'm going to teach you how do you make it so you can get out of the house. What you do is go right here and right click in uh, quick event creation and let's make a transfer. Then location, click the location, go back to normal town and have it one space below the do uh, door opening here. Uh, direction that doesn't really matter but uh, that I'd like to usually have it in a direction that makes sense so here it will be down because you're pointing down as if you're leaving a house we go back to normal town and then go back to that specific house right click this square and quick event creation let's make a door then go to house one for the destination and have it one above the exit Now let's try playing our game again. When we select new game, we'll spawn in here and then we'll be able to leave and we'll be able to return. Congratulations, you have just successfully made your very first building in RPG Maker MV. Next I will teach you probably one of the most fundamental aspects of RPG Maker, the conditional branch. Conditional branches work using two different things, switches and variables. Now this might all seem quite confusing, but it'll make sense when we actually uh, get into it. Now switches 
they don't do anything by themselves. They are either on or off. Now, a conditional branch that I can show you here. A conditional branch, you can find a switch. Now, I don't have a name switch here, but let's just uh, see if I name this one switch1. Say, if switch1 is on, then you can have it do a specific action. Now, I'm not going to have it right here, but that's kind of how conditional branches work. So, let's say you want to have a... Uh, just a little quest where you have to talk to a specific person. So let's make one person right here. So double click on that square while you are in event mode. And uh, let's just go to people one. And let's say you a kid wants to find his grandpa. And uh, let's say show text. And let's make his face of a little kid. Say... I can't find my grandpa. Can you help me find him? Now make sure you preview this to see if it doesn't fit. Then just press enter right there to make it all fit in here. I can't help my find my grandpa. Can you help me find him? Now, uh, before we continue here, let's just press OK. And let's put his grandpa right in front of this statue here. And uh, let's just put this one here. And then show text. People one. And have that face. Oops. And then you say... I am my my grandson is looking for me. I am in fact his grandpa. But that's not just uh, that's not good enough right there. We need something to actually change within the game. So let's do control switches. Instead of naming the switch one, let's name it Grandpa. Then click apply and OK. And turn it on. I'll say control, control switches 0001 Grandpa on. Let's go back up to the kid here. And uh, we're actually... What we want to do is actually right click this and copy it and actually press the delete key on your keyboard you can right clicking on the cut it so I forgot what you want to do is make a conditional branch here and uh, I want to say if grandpa is switch grandpa is on then make sure you check create else branch so put so what we want to do is paste what we just copied there into the else. And then in here, you want to put in, let's put the little face of the little kid. Thanks for helping me find my grandpa. I'm glad he's okay. Let's make sure it's all it all fits in there. So let me give you a rundown of what this is actually doing. When you talk to him, it will ask you if Grant. The game will check to see if Grandpa is on. If it is not on, he'll say, "I can't find my Grandpa. Can you help me find him?" If it is on, he'll say, "Thank you for helping me find the Grandpa." What turns it on is when you actually talk to him. So because when you talk to him, it turns it on, then it makes it so he says this instead of this. So let's test this out to see if it works. So let's make a new game. Let's just go outside. Let's talk to him and say, I can't find my grandpa. Can you help me find him? Let's 
just dash down here. Say my grandson is looking for me. I am in fact his grandpa. Then when you go back. Thanks for helping me find my grandpa. I'm glad he's okay. Congratulations, you have just successfully made one of the most simple yet fundamental aspects of an RPG Maker MV game. Next, we're going to learn the other one, the variable. So let's say you want to make a, uh, a quest where a lady is trying to find her chickens, who she lost all of her chickens. So this looks kind of like a farm. Uh, kind of like a barn. So let's just put a uh, let's put this this lady right here and uh, show text. Actually, wait, let's not quite show text yet. What I'm gonna do is a uh, conditional branch and variable. Let's say uh, chickens. Fly. Okay. Make sure that it variable chickens is equal to, let's say she lost three chickens. So, one, two, three. Now, let's say if, it's, if variable chickens is equal to a constant three, then it will do something. Now, make sure it's that you also create an else branch. So, if chickens is equal to three. So, let's go to the else branch here and let's show text and uh, let's show their, her face right there and say I lost three chickens can you help me find them and you know what, let's add a little more flavor to this um, let you can add something right after and say I'm so worried. I just hope that th they're all right. And then, uh, yeah, th then just go to the one right above else. So this is what will actually happen if chickens is equal to three. Then put the face and say, thank you so much for helping me find my chickens. Uh, say I'm so re relieved. Click apply and OK. Now nothing actually will happen because you know there aren't any chickens yet. So <clears throat> let's hide some chickens around town. Let's make one here. Let's find. Uh, go to nature and chicken and let's uh, show text and set high enough face it'll just say what you what just happened when you interact with it it'll say you just got a chicken y you should and uh, let's that's not let's just leave it at that you just got a chicken and then control variables then you want to find, make sure it's on chickens. Add, not set. Make sure it's add a constant of one. Then click apply and OK. Now you, you don't actually have to event that, like, uh, write all that out again. You can actually just copy this by either uh, clicking on it and then do Control C on a Windows keyboard. Or you can right click it and click copy. That's what I'll do just to make it more easy and visual for you guys. And uh, let's put a chicken right here. And let's put a chicken up here. So see one, two, three, all of them are exactly the same. So I see it will increase the variable chickens by one until the variable is three, and then it will trigger this right here. So let's go ahead and try this. New game. 
then let's leave. See, there's a little boy. And let's go over and see the woman's chickens. Say, I lost three chickens. Can you help me find them? I'm so worried. I hope, I just hope that they're all right. So let's go ahead and dash over and you just got a chicken. Oh, and I just forgot something very vital. So excuse me before we actually continue. Want we'll to close your game? You see, there was actually a problem with that. If you noticed, you could just keep talking that chicken over and over again, and it'll keep saying you just got a chicken. And but you want the chicken to actually go away. So let's actually edit this here. What I want to do is create a new event page. And then go back to one. Page one. That this is a very important thing right here. Now we'll learn about the self switch. Now when you a uh, self switch, it's like a normal switch, only it's not global. It only affects this event. So that means that this switch can never affect any other event in any part of the game. But that may seem useless, but you'll see how it's useful here. So if you tur let's turn self switch A on for this, and then go to page two, and then let's say conditions for page two to appear is self switch A on. And if you notice this has nothing on it, so that means as soon as this turns on, the chicken will actually disappear. So let's just go ahead and uh, let's delete the other chickens. And then let's make sure we copy this. Copy this chicken. And put them where they belong. Now let's try playing again. Now let's just leave the house. Let me dash over by holding down shift. And let's talk to this lady. I lost three chickens. Can you help me find them? I'm so worried. I just hope that they're all right. So first, let's go talk to this chicken. Say, you just got a chicken. And then the chicken will disappear. Let's just talk to the others. You just got a chicken. Disappears. Say, you just got a chicken. And then it, it disappears. And then when we talk to the lady again, see, thank you so much for helping me find my chickens. I'm so relieved. And also, if you notice, that does not affect how um, the other one works too. So you can still use the grandpa quest as well. As you see, it's still just working just fine. Say thanks for helping me find my grandpa. And that is all we're going to cover in this episode. So I hope that this helped you a little bit. And I will continue to make videos for this series. I actually enjoyed making this episode quite a bit. Anyway, thank you for watching. This is the Immortal Ant for us. Out.